Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Preview and prediction time for Alexander Zverev versus Daniel Medvedev. It's semi-final time here in Beijing, and I can't wait to get into this one because it's such an interesting rivalry. Medvedev does lead the head-to-head, -head, but 9-7, so it's a very tight one. And we are going to get into the nitty-gritty, talking about how strategically and tactically this one's going to match up, and also how each player has looked as well at the tournament so far. And then ultimately, I'll give you guys my prediction as well as always. So let's get into their route to the semifinals so far. Zverev's looked pretty impressive, although he has had to really fight his way to this stage. He did win the Chengdun title, Chengdu title even, last week or a week and a half ago. Since then, he's looked good in Beijing in one of the most stacked ATP 500s that I've seen in my lifetime. He beat Schwarzman, Davich Vakina, and Nicholas Cherry all in three sets. Nicholas Cherry was my bit of a left field pick to go on to win the title. Zverev stopped him in his tracks. So, uh, yeah, I mean, he might be slightly fatigued after winning last week as well. Uh, so if this gets super physical, we might see a slight dip from Zverev. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the case. Then if we look at Medvedev, he's been very impressive, only dropping the one set en route to the semifinals. He beat Tommy Paul in straight sets, who I hold my hands up in my bracket. I said that he was going to lose uh, just because I thought Tommy Paul's style is a style that could cause Medvedev problems and he's got variety enough in his game, the legs and also the good transition game to cause Medvedev problems, but it wasn't the case. The Russian carried on his really good form from the US Open, and I also said that if you know Medvedev was going to play that level, Tommy Paul would have no chance, and that's what ended up coming to fruition. He then beat Dimina in a really, really good match again, uh, just clinical from him, winning in straight sets. And then Ugo Ombo, who's been in some decent form this year, and good to see him making a bit of a comeback. He has really, really struggled um, but in previous seasons, just being able to actually make a string of tournaments and uh, you know, being able to play a lot of tennis. He's just struggled with injuries and had really big breaks outside the sport. So this is a really positive sign for him. But for Medvedev, he was just too strong in the end. In terms of the head-to-head, -head, so it's 7-5. I don't want to go into every single match. Uh, the matches from this year, though, which there's a few, there's four of them. Uh, so Medvedev has won three out of the four. Uh, he won in Indian Wells in March in three sets. Then in um, Mon sorry, in Monte Carlo, won in three sets there as well. Uh, albeit in, at Indian Wells, Monte Carlo, both those matches, Zverev had, well, he was in front at some point in those matches. And then he just surrendered the lead almost. And Medvedev played well. But Zverev, I think, maybe dropped his level one a bit conservative. Uh, then in Rome, Medvedev actually destroyed Zverev in straight sets. Really impressive victory. Went on to win the title there as well. But the most recent match was in Cincinnati. And Zverev came out on top in three sets. So that's the one victory he's had this year. It was a tight one. 6-4, 5-7, 6-4. And of course, Medvedev then went on to make the final of the US Open after... Uh, losing to Zverev here in Cincinnati. So since then, he's obviously gained some form of confidence. So, look, I think Medvedev is the slight favourite, at least uh, just given that Zverev has played a lot of tennis in the last couple of weeks, plus the fact that I think Medvedev is arguably playing the better tennis. Uh, he's been more fresh as well. And, uh, yeah, I would just think he that final appearance at the US Open and beating Alcaraz as well, that would have given him a lot of confidence. I would love potentially to see Medvedev win and then Alcaraz beat Sinner and see that as a rematch because I just think would Alcaraz maybe have figured out how to to beat him again and or on hardcore is Medvedev just a real real issue for Alcaraz at the moment, uh, which is a bit strange because Indian Wells obviously it looked like Alcaraz was going to have a really really tough style for the Russian, but we're talking about Zverev Medvedev, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. In terms of how it matches up. You know, both players have quite a few similarities, but also a lot of differences. And 
it's one of those matchups where you look at and you might think well, some people might look at it and say oh, it's a little bit samey you know both players have big first serves which they do they can win three points off serve they're also both very good returners that's also very true both extremely good returners uh both tend to stay quite deep in their return positions as uh, Zverev even though Medvedev returns really deep and I think it works for him I do think Zverev could potentially try and return a bit closer to the baseline but Maybe he wouldn't be as effective as a returner if he did. Uh, so both players stay really far back behind the baseline, and they will do in this matchup as both guys can serve big. Um, but they, you know, they're very effective on the serve return, uh, to be fair, and that's a real big similarity. The other thing is the backhand. Now, these are two players on tour, uh, which is very rare to see, will potentially actually run around the forehand or try and open, out on the, open up on the backhand more. And then with the forehand in rallies because their backhands are extremely reliable and they've got, in my opinion, two of the top five backhands on tour. Uh, definitely for two-handers, that is. And I probably think if you include one-handers, they're up there as well in the top five. And they're just extremely, extremely reliable uh, tools. Uh, they defend the backhand corners really well as well. And then, actually, if you look at the forehand, um, and these are all the similarities, there's quite a few, right? The forehands are not as trustworthy. They're not as reliable. You know, you've got Zverev, who can be a bit safe on the forehand. It can be a bit loopy with a lot of spin and not a lot of pace through the court. He can go cross-court a lot with it as well. Doesn't really back himself to go line and, and actually take some risks on it, uh, especially when he's hitting approach shots as well. And uh, he's got pretty good hands in the net, which we'll get into in a second, but he can sometimes let himself short or sell himself short on the approach shot. And it ends up meaning that his net, or I guess his, his net play or the standard net play that's required after that net approach is just extremely difficult for him to succeed at on a consistent basis anyway. Uh, for Medvedev, he's similar, right? The forehand... Uh, a bit different in terms of we're well, talking about it being really loopy and spinny. But it's a bit different because Medvedev hits a lot flatter than Zverev, generally speaking. But the forehand actually can be quite spinny, um, unlike the backhand, which is more of a shovel and very much a deflector, very kind of, I would say, low missiles almost from the back of the corner, backhand side, arrow like. Uh, backhand and the forehand though can be quite whippy um to be fair a lot of wrist action there as well and again it can be a little bit unreliable you can make mistakes on it. it it can not be as consistent as the backhand so those are a lot of similarities between the two but where i think they differ is around the net i think Zverev is more comfortable around the net than Medvedev. that's for sure transition game is much better as well in my opinion i also think Zverev's slice is better than Medvedev's. i think Zverev, uh, Medvedev's slice is just not in my opinion, it's not serviceable. I, I just don't, I don't rate it at all. Um, drop shots, actually, we don't see a huge amount from either player, but I have seen Medvedev employ it a bit more. Uh, I've been quite impressed with his drop shot at times, uh, just to add that variation to his game. And I do think even coming to the net, he he has tried. I think maybe he's got he's come to the conclusion that it's never going to be a really comfortable part of his game. So. Uh, in these extremely competitive matches, he's not going to be trying out a tactic that is potentially going to mean that he's going to lose a high proportion of those points. Uh, but for Zverev, you know, yeah, I, I think for him, he has more of an ability. So we talked about a lot of similarities, but I think where, where the differences lie is that Zverev, in my opinion, has the ability, and I also think he is at his best when he's playing more aggressive tennis. That is going line more, going cross-court less, trying to actually go for a little bit more, uh, just having that type of calculated aggression to his game when he's trying to look to move forward rather than being happy to just rally from the back of the court. And there will be exchanges with players from the back of the court with Zverev where he'll either stick cross-court to cross-court uh, cross court or forehand to forehand, backhand to backhand, or he will go deep down the middle and he will just stay in that rally for a, a good 5-10 shots at times without changing direction much. And I do feel like sometimes he is very much caution first. And I think a player of his ability needs to be taking 
more calculated risks. Not, I'm not saying that he needs to go for a winner running off court three meters uh, wide and you know two meters behind the baseline and then trying to go around the net post. What I'm saying is when he is in a rally and it's at neutral and he's on the baseline and they're exchanging from the middle of the court, he needs to be the one to try and make the move first. I don't think he always is. And when he does play more aggressive tennis, I think that's when he's at his best. And I think that's when he is a real, real trouble for people. Um, whereas with Medvedev, he's very different because I think his style is actually more suited to when he is being a backboard and he is being extremely solid defensively uh, because if he starts making a lot of errors, that kind of goes completely against his whole natural game, to be honest. And it just doesn't suit him because what happens is he's not the type of player that's going to hit a huge amount of winners all the time, apart from, you know, from aces and unreturnables. Uh, he will hit some winners, no doubt, because he does have the ability to do so and switch on when needed. But that's not his forte. His forte is inducing errors from the opponent is breaking them down with depth with a uh, direction with his legs right he's just outlasting opponents in rallies and his shot tolerance is through the roof that's where he really shines now Zverev is not going to be able to in my opinion outlast Medvedev from the back of the court when it comes to the longer rallies um, I think actually Zverev is, needs to be more more confident in his game he needs to dictate in the rallies, because if you if you're Medvedev, right, and you have Zverev playing quite safe, you don't mind. You just keep on going. You keep on going until Zverev makes a mistake. You just say, "Fine, perfect, thank you. You're not going to hurt me. This is comfortable for me. I'm just going to push you back as I can, but I'm making sure that I play high percentage shots, and then you're going to make a, a mistake eventually because I'm going to back myself nine times out of ten to outlast you in the rallies." So Zverev needs to be aggressive, for one. Uh, and two as well, I think this is really important, is Medvedev is the type of player that feeds off rhythm. If you are going to hit the same ball consistently time and time and time and time and time again, which Zverev can do, especially in the cross-court exchanges, the same high spin, loopy forehand, cross-court, no variation, no change of pace, no change of spin, no change of direction. That will be a real, real problem for Zverev if he gets caught into these types of exchanges. He needs to find variation. He either needs to go line first in the exchanges. Uh, for one, at least change of direction will help. Two, he needs to try and make sure that when he's hitting his forehand and his backhand, it's not the same ball over and over again. Because Medvedev absolutely thrives off rhythm because he is a counterpuncher. He is a backboard. He is a deflector. And his game is built on a lot of timing. Uh, and that comes with just being able to get balls back at will, um, whichever direction he pleases, and pushing uh, the opponent back, right, when he can. Now, where Zverev is able to make Medvedev feel uncomfortable is by playing with a bit more variation. So utilizing the backhand slice. I think we've seen Medvedev has definitely, in my opinion, played it better than he did, say, a year ago or a year and a half ago. Uh, but I, I do still think at his height, at his frame, he still doesn't like getting down, you know, ankle height to his backhand. It's not something that he's... <laughs> Uh, in my opinion, anyway, I don't think it's something that he super enjoys uh, doing. And, and even if Zverev is able to slice down the line, that would make a big, big difference. Uh, I do think he needs to go line more on the backhand because the Medvedev forehand side is the weaker side when it comes to defending anyway. And that means that if Zverev is able to step in more on the backhand and he's got one of the best backhand lines in the game when it's firing... Uh, that he can hurt Medvedev in that corner. And I think more than Medvedev can to Zverev, because I think Medvedev's backhand line is also very good. Um, but I do think Zverev defends that corner a bit better. Um, and that's where I guess the loopy topspin forehands come into play, because he'll hit that forehand in those positions. And it, most of the time will be deep enough to get him back to a neutral position. And that's really, really key. And, and it's a big advantage to have in his game. 
Uh, for sure. In terms of, you know, other aspects to it, while well, the server turn dynamic is, is interesting because Medvedev, you know, his service form generally can fluctuate so much in honesty. Um, but if he's serving well, then it can be difficult to find rhythm because he can get through his games very quickly. Uh, and Zverev, you know, as a, as a returner, he, he knows that Medvedev's not going to come forward to the net much. So it gives him at least the safety knowing that he can go high and heavy on the return and it's not going to be a volley or smash for the plus one shot for the most part. Uh, so, you know, that's something that Zverev could potentially exploit uh, and maybe try and utilize that to his advantage. Um, I think for Medvedev, you know, Zverev serves bombs. He does. He just serves like huge, huge serves at times and it becomes really hard to handle. He'll just do what he always does, which is just get the ball back as much as he can, get to everything, make it difficult, make Zverev play the extra ball. Uh, that's what we're looking to do. But I think, you know, for Zverev, it's important that he has a good serving day, I think, um, against maybe, you know, I feel like a serve needs to fire. He can't be hitting a lot of, uh, you know, he can't, in my opinion, anyway, he can't be hitting a lot of double faults or, or you know, not hitting a high percentage of first serves. Against Jerry, let's see. So 13 aces to one double four, that's really good. First serves in 85%, that's really good. Uh, so that's a positive uh, in my book, to be honest. I mean, that's that's definitely a positive sign uh, of what's to come um, if he can carry on that type of form against. In his previous match, Derek Chavkin, yeah, only one double four again. This over three sets, nine aces, 77% first serves in. So, you know, some real positives there. Some real positives and... Look, I'm intrigued to see how this one goes because I think it's pretty evenly matched. And, you know, as we talk about the that truths that both players have, it's there's not that much in it, really. It's very, very tight. And this there's the reason why the head-to-head -head is as tight as it is. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, look, based on form uh, and based on the fact that Mourinho has played not as much tennis as Zverev, he goes into a favourite. In terms of my prediction... The question is, does Verev get another win over Medvedev and close the gap in the head-to-head, -head, or does Medvedev stamp his authority? I think this might be too much for Zverev. I just think it's going to be too physical in the end, and he's had a very tough week and a half uh, in terms of just time on court. And I think Medvedev physically will hold up better. I think he's going to frustrate Zverev. There is a little bit of needle there as well because they have, uh, they were relatively, I think, friendly. But then there's been a few, I'm going to say, clashes this year uh, where <laughs> they haven't really gone on too much. So, yeah, I, I think Movedev's going to come out on top though. Uh, that, that's that's how I'm seeing it. Zverev, he has the ability to win. It, it'll just be. Can he avoid getting dragged into like a super physical match? Because I think if he does, I think he loses. Uh, but if he doesn't, then I think he is the favorite. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but he needs to be very proactive and take the initiative uh, when it comes to the points. Because if it's played on Medvedev's terms, Zarela's not going to enjoy it. I <laughs> he's not going to enjoy it. Let me know your let me know your thoughts or even in the comment section below. Very interested to hear what you guys think in terms of who's going to win. And uh, hopefully see you very soon. Stay safe and well, guys.